Good afternoon again, everyone. First, a big thank you to Natalie for her presentation and for the questions that we've had so far. Um, this really helps set the stage with the global epi situation update and really highlighting the importance and the need for regional and global surveillance. Um, I just wanted to do a quick housekeeping rule. Language is so important, and we are in the regional and global surveillance uh, session for the afternoon, but regional has so many meanings. So when we get to the discussion section or when you provide any feedback or ask questions, um, if you were referring to regional as subnational, please just highlight that for us uh, versus whether you mean countries within a region and an actual region. Um, so we always want to highlight that because I know that can be a source of confusion sometimes in these discussions. So I'm looking forward to having a very lively, hopefully dynamic and informative session on regional and global cholera surveillance. There'll be just a couple of introductory slides from me. I'm hoping to do less of the talking uh, today. And we want to just highlight some of the broader perspectives about the importance of regional and global cholera surveillance. And then after, we'll just do a quick one to five minute feedback session, depending on our time. And then we'll go into our five presenters. And then we'll go into our discussion section after the coffee break. Great. So we have had our sub working group for about two years. I've had the pleasure of chairing that sub working group on regional and global surveillance. And the scope of this sub working group has been to support cholera preparedness and outbreak response, as well as monitor progress along the global roadmap at the regional and the global levels. I will note that we started out as a regional surveillance subgroup, and then we expanded within the past year to global. And as we presented on last year, so this is not news for some, but maybe new for those who were not there last year, we completed a landscape analysis of the regional organizations and their state of play. Oh, it's the problem with the touch screens. And when we conducted this uh, landscape analysis, we found a lot of heterogeneity across the regional organizations. Um, we also found differing levels of engagement across a number of different surveillance as well as coordination activities. And this really got us thinking as we shifted hopefully out of a global pandemic and really saw a shift in the global cholera landscape. What are the next steps from here? Where do we go with regional and global cholera surveillance? And how can the GTFCC subworking group uh, contribute to this? So what we're really hoping for today is to hear from our presenters, of course, on a more updated state of play globally and within the regions on cholera surveillance. And then we're going to have a discussion on what our way forward might be. So when we conducted our landscape analysis, one of the things that we did was think about the different core priorities or goals that a re regional organization might be undertaking and really in service of the countries and the region. And these are not exhaustive, what you see on the slide, but they are sort of a broad overview of the goals and priorities that we identified. And the first is to develop, animate, and sustain strong cholera networks. So timely and robust alert and reporting channels both cross-border, and I don't have this on the slide, but multinationally, regionally, and globally. And then the second was collecting, validating, analyzing, interpreting, and disseminating data on the cholera epi situation and risk of spread at the regional and global levels to foster coordinated regional preparedness and response. And we had a great presentation from Natalie just now on uh, the value of that. And then the third, and I think this is the one where we see the impact, is monitoring and supporting countries in a region to strengthen their cholera surveillance by assessing the modalities and performance of countries for their cholera surveillance. And then not listed here, but mentioned just a slide ago, this monitoring and evaluation at the regional levels also facilitates monitoring progress along the 2030 roadmap. So in support of these objectives, we also identified a number of attributes that were very important both to countries and to regional organizations. And the first is that participation should be as low burden as possible. So today in the discussion section, we are hoping to hear what are the challenges to participating in regional or global surveillance. And we do want to hear some perspectives and ideas on how this can be improved. And then the second and third attributes are that the outputs should be useful and timely, and that ultimately they have an impact on preparedness and response at the country level. And we call this the incentive, as you will. So we hope that will be an additional discussion topic this afternoon. 
So to summarize and to set the stage for the remainder of the afternoon, we're first going to hear a state of play on global surveillance, and that'll be presented virtually by Craig Schultz from the IMST. And this will be followed by four state of play presentations on regional surveillance by focal persons from Afro, Emro, Ciaro, and Pajo, some uh, in person and some virtual. So excuse us as we go back and forth. And these state of play presentations, we're going to be hearing about what is being done the key achievements, the gaps, and the challenges. And as I've been mentioning, the ultimate goal of this is for us to discuss what are the true priorities, what needs to be addressed and improved, and what are the ways to overcome them and identify the ultimate incentives to countries. We're finally going to wrap up by summarizing the main discussion points and see if we can define if there are any technical needs in order to make progress with regional and global surveillance and that could potentially be supported by the GTFCC. So let me see time. Okay, we're doing okay. So uh, no more than five minutes. Uh, before we move on to the state of play, we're just going to have a quick feedback session, um, followed by a brief slide with a poll on it for you to all fill out before the coffee break. Um, so we just wanted to provide an opportunity before we go into the presentations, as there won't be a question and answer between each presentation, um, on what we've just presented today and anything else from Natalie's presentation and anything that you didn't hear that you think is important for us to discuss this afternoon. Online, we have uh, Fred Capaya, who would like to make a comment. Um, not really. Uh, um, I think I'll make a comment later. I wanted to ask uh, after the previous speaker. So I'll ask later after, I think, the presentations. Thank you. Okay, well, then we'll make up some time if there's no additional feedback and just one last slide. Um, I know you've done a lot of polls for all the sessions. We just have one more for you today. Um, and we're just asking that you can share your thoughts before you go to the coffee break. Uh, so you'll have plenty of time over the next hour to uh, complete this poll. Uh, it's at tinyurl.com forward slash regional surveillance. That should be easy to remember, but maybe we can put it in the chat. Um, just in case. And two quick questions, and we're hoping for you to provide key words, so no more than one to three words. Um, the first is, what do countries expect to gain from regional surveillance? And the second is, what would improve your capacity to participate in regional surveillance? So with that, I want to say thank you to the subworking group that has participated over the past two years, especially over the past year. I'm um, very excited for us to hear from you all today about our possible way forward to support regional and global surveillance. And we will uh, move now to Craig Schultz online.